Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, as you can see from my collection here, I've made just just a plethora of drinking things on this show. We're talking everything from like horn mugs to leather canteens to wooden mug things. I've made them out of gourds. I've made these fun little dragon eye fantasy things. Now, this may show a deep commitment to proper hydrations or a troubling propensity for the spirits that I do so enjoy. But it's honestly mostly because I've been chasing a very particular dragon. Specifically, a vessel I could use at LARPs or fantasy events that can hold hot liquids. The problem is, most of the stuff that you could use to stop things in general from being porous and like leaking water tend to be toxic. These are your polyurethanes and the like. On the other hand of it, we have the more natural things like beeswax, which is what I tend to use, but it has the problem where if it gets too hot, it melts, because you know, it's wax. And though so far my best bet have been like the gourds because you don't really have to treat them in order for them to be watertight and they can handle hot liquids, they're also rather fragile and prone to breaking, so I don't want to carry them around with me everywhere I go. Then at this last event I was at, I spied somebody using one of these bad boys here. That, my friend, is called the Cookson. It's a wooden drinking vessel slash ladle bowl spoon thing that was originally made by the indigenous people of Lapland. But I saw it and I immediately knew I had to has one. To add just a little bit of extra spice to this challenge though, I wanted to see if I could make it out of some firewood. So that's today's episode. Today we're gonna learn how to take something like cheap firewood and turn it into a useful little cup. So without much further ado, Jesus. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. Now, as I mentioned, I decided to make my cook set out of some of this birch firewood that I bought from Home Depot. It comes in a whole bag of them for like 11 bucks. Now for you sticklers of the old ways out there, I already feel you typing in the comment section and you can stop. I know they're traditionally made out of a birch burl. And for those of you who don't know, a burl is just kind of what grows on a tree when it's been under stress. Think of it as like tree scar tissue, if you will. And the grain grows in a bunch of different ways, making it really resistant to cracking. And I honestly searched my own woods. I happen to have a lot of birch trees, but not one of them had a burl big enough for me to be able to do this. That said, though traditionally made from birch burls, cooks have been made from a whole bunch of different materials. I chose my birch firewood because one, it was still birch, which is kind of the traditional wood, sort of. It was also thick enough to make the cup from already well dried. There's like eight of them in a bundle. So if I mess up, I have plenty of other wood to choose from. And I can't stress this enough. It's super cheap. It's just really cheap. So I started by picking out a nice half log with an already rounded bottom. This brings me part way to my cup shape I'm going for already. So step one was grabbing ye olde chisel and removing all that tasty, tasty bark. All of which I save as a fire starter for the next time I, you know, decide to burn things, which happens more often than you'd think. Now with the bulk of that removed, I decided to also smooth out the top of the log just to give me a smooth area to kind of draw my design onto. To do this, I just used a basic hand planer. This was fairly easy to do. It not only gave me a nice surface, but also showed off how pretty that grain will be once finished up. And I'm not gonna lie, this kind of gave me a bit of an existential crisis. The grain was so pretty. How much of this stuff have I just been burning wastefully? Now that popping, crackling scream shall haunt my nightmares forever. So to lay out my bowl, I employed a compass just to try to get a perfect circle. Though if you don't have one, you can just use something circular to trace. With that circle in place, I just freehanded the rough size and shape that I wanted for a handle. Now, for the entirety of this project, you can 100% use hand tools. There's like a thousand videos on the internet of somebody sitting there and painstakingly whittling one of these out of a log. For only real men use knives and hatchet and sand it down with their stubble. I, on the other hand, opted to just use my trusty bandsaw. Don't judge me, I have like a weekend to bust all these projects out. <laughs> After this first cut, I take special care to make sure that the wood doesn't have any major splits or anything that go all the way through to where the basin of the cup is gonna be. Obviously, holes in a cup, not the most useful thing. And after that first cut, if they were bad, I still had enough material to move it back a little bit and see if those cracks persist. Happy Mind doesn't have any major faults. I continue to remove all of the unneeded wood and rough out the overall shape. Next, I went back in and sketched out the top angle of the handle, giving me a nice lazy arch down. Finally, I figured out the rough shape of the bottom of that handle, including some little finger grooves. I was super happy with this overall design. The shape felt good and that design fit my hand pretty well. 
Now to continue refining that shape down more, I decided to use my belt sander with an 80 grit belt to really trim off that excess. I spent some special attention to flattening out the bottom a bit just to make sure it had a stable base. Using the sander made the whole process super fast and the shape really started to come together. Now if you don't have a belt sander or the money to go out and get one, I'd recommend using something like a rasp. That'll remove a lot of that wood, but it'll just take you a little bit longer than if you had the machine, obviously. I just don't want you to feel like you absolutely need any power tools. This is actually a really common like bushcraft project. In fact, with some 100 grit sandpaper, I was able to get this Kuxa looking really slick in a super short amount of time. And look at that pretty grain! Can you believe that would have just been burnt? But at this point in time, tis but a pretty paperweight. From here, we need to start hollowing that sucker out so we can actually, you know, carry liquids. So first things first, I went back in with the compass and marked out another circle about a quarter of an inch from the edge to use as my guide. Now the name of the game here is to remove as much material as possible in the easiest way as possible so that when I go back in and have to start scraping it, it's less tedious for me. So I started with the biggest hole saw bit I had in my collection and drilled down till I felt it was a little bit over a half of an inch left on the bottom. Then I proceeded to use a drill bit and just drill a bunch of holes close to each other. Every hole is less material that'll need to be removed and those thinner bits of wood there are way easier to chisel away. Using a good sharp chisel, I was able to get the basin most of the way there. Now I could have busted out some really aggressive sandpaper and just tried to work away all the marks and get us the rest of the way down, but it was still so much material that I was afraid that would take forever. And because I only had those straight chisels, every time I kind of went down, it either left me with kind of straight sides or I dig too deeply into it and it would start taking away that nice curve I wanted. Now a good tool for this purpose would be like a hook knife or a spoon knife something with a nice rounded edge that you could use for carving exactly things like this. But I don't have those tools. That would have been nice if I thought ahead, but I didn't, so. That said, I did have a wrench. Specifically one with this little angled head here. And thanks to this video by Felix Imler, I think that's how you pronounce it, link in the description below, I learned that a round spoon carving knife can fairly easily be made out of a wrench. To do that, we first need to remove all of the teeth inside of the head here. If you're patient, you can totally do this with a hand file. But I am I'm not patient, so I decided to bust out my Dremel. Using my Dremel with a sanding drum bit in it made it super short work, and in no time the inside of that head was nice and smooth, and an inner angle was started. The thought here is you basically want this thing to end up being like a blade on this side which means the inside and the outside, you want them to kind of angle towards each other to make a sharp point. So once that inside was smooth and that inside angle was started, I moved over to my belt sander and started an angle on the outer edge, bringing it in until it formed a sharp blade. And this worked surprisingly well to smooth out the rest of the shape inside of that bowl. It had no problem removing all that excess material and left me with a surface that'll be much easier to finish off. Now, would buying the actual tool that this is copying work better? Absolutely, like a thinner blade would definitely work better, but in a pinch, that worked great. Okay, so now we're getting there. Now it's time to just start smoothing this thing out and making it look all sexy. That said, getting into like a small like cup or whatever and sanding is a real pain in the ass for me. I don't know, just like the position you gotta put your hand in to hold the sandpaper in there, it makes my hand cramp up. I just, I don't like it, it's a pain. <laughs> So to get around that, I came up with a bit of an idea. I just busted out this piece of 80 grit sandpaper that's sticky on one side. It's actually made to be put onto like an old orbital sander. The other half of this equation is this here tennis ball. I think you see where I'm going with this. I just removed the plastic backing and then stuck the sandpaper to the tennis ball, trying to make it as round and smooth as I could. Then I just used that to sand out that bowl area. And this actually ends up doing a really good job. I'm super proud of this little innovation here. The give of the tennis ball really helped it to kind of mold to the inside of that bowl. And the fact that it was circular shaped anyways was really conducive to, you know, sanding the inside of a cup. Right, at this point, it's just a bunch of fit and finish work. Starting with the rim of the cup, which I went back in with my Dremel and sanded off all the sharp square edges to bring it to more of a comfortable shape to sip out of. I also realized my thumb kept wanting to sit here in the handle, and I thought it would be cool if there was a little indent here specifically to cater to that. 
Finally, I went back in and made those finger grooves a little bit deeper to give me a really good grip on that handle. Now as a very last touch, a lot of the cookses I see out in the wild actually have like a little place for a leather strap to go. This just makes it easy to kind of either keep on your wrist or on your belt or your backpack as you're traveling. To do that, I first started with a smaller drill bit and made a hole right at the end of that handle. Then I moved in with a little bit larger of a drill bit to make a hole big enough to accept some leather cordage. But I'm dumb and did nothing to secure that wood and immediately chipped out just a huge piece. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really heartbroken about that. You know when you get a project and you've got it sanded down and everything's really kind of silky and smooth looking, all your transitions are nice and whatever, and then there's this glaring chip out. Oh my God. But you know what? That's what the project wanted to do. That's, it's, I'm gonna get kind of metaphysical here. That's what it was supposed to have done or else it wouldn't have done it. I have to feel this way or I'm gonna go crazy. So if that's what the universe desire of this cup needs to look like, I decided to roll with it. I busted out my Dremel and I just lowered everything on the top half of that handle down to the level of that chip, giving me this kind of cool raised area for the finger grips. But then that inspired me even further and I decided to continue that little groove into the cup, making this kind of casual swoop. Which of course I just went back in with my Dremel and removed all of that wood within my drawing to give me this interesting little design. Then went back over the whole thing with various grits of sandpaper until it was silky smooth. And I love how slick this looks. That turned out to be like a Bob Ross style happy accident. At first I was kind of racking my brain of like, should I carve runes into it? Or what can I put on the cup to make it look a little bit more jazzy? But I think it looks even better with just kind of that little swoop in there. It adds that texture to it. It looks interesting. I really, really like it. A project's not done until it's done, and in between there, there are no mistakes. There's just chances to alter your plan a little bit, that's all. Now to clean it up, I just went over the entire thing with a slightly moistened rag to remove a bunch of the dust. I also threaded some cordage through that hole and tied it off. Again, this gives me a perfect little spot to hang my kuksa and make it super easy to carry along with me on adventures. The last thing I had to do was seal this bad boy. Now in researching it out there, there's actually a few kind of more traditional ways to do this. One of them is soaking the entire thing in some hot coffee in order to get a lot of those like coffee oils kind of impregnated into the wood, which helps protect it. The problem is that tends to darken the whole thing and I really like kind of that lighter colored wood on the outside. Another way is to actually boil it in salt water. Boiling it removes a lot of the tannins from the wood, which helps it to taste less like wood. And I read that the salt kind of hardens the wood and helps protect it from rot. But I ended up using the third method I read about. This was just filling the cup with some freshly brewed coffee, then leaving it there to soak for about five to 10 minutes. Again, doing this impregnates that wood with all of the oils from your coffee. Once the time was up, I dumped it out and then filled that up with the used coffee grounds. This I kind of massaged into the wood and then I left that to sit for another half hour or so. Once done, I simply removed all the grounds and wiped the inside of the cup clean. Then for the outside, I just applied a coat of boiled linseed oil to help protect it and strengthen the wood. And with that, our little cup is all done. Check this thing out. It's beautiful, it fits in my hand nicely. I love this thing. And for the moment of truth. Yes, I take my coffee like I take my magic. Black. No leakage, has no problem with hot liquids. It is sippable, it doesn't taste like wood. It is really, I love this thing. Now, if you make one of these, care instructions on it is one, don't wash it with like dish soap or anything because that's gonna remove a lot of the oils and start drying out your wood. You basically just rinse it and wipe it down. You want those oils in there. Also, using it more often is gonna keep it in better shape because it's gonna stop the wood from drying out. On a website that specifically makes these, I read like, use it daily if you can. And I intend to. Now I hope you had fun seeing this get built. I'm still really impressed that this just came from like a random log of firewood. And I still have like a whole bundle of it left. Let me know down in the comment section below if there's anything else you could think of that'd be cool to be built out of just firewood. Aside from, you know, a fire, obviously. Now speaking of cool accessories, I wanted to take a moment to shout out Berg Snyder who partnered with us to give you a fantastic discount on everything in their store. Bergsnyder provides a wide variety of like medieval clothing and accessories. 
And by using promo code SKILLTREE at checkout, you get 15% off. Also, make sure you check back in next week because our friends over at Berg Snyder are going to be announcing the winners of our level three of the Level Up Lop competition. From there, we'll have one more round to assess the grand champion and decide who's going to be coming with us to Germany to the largest LARP event in the world, Conquest. So all you competitors, make sure that your, like, passport is ready because things are about to pop off. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, why don't you give us some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members, and without them, our world stops turning. It's because of their generosity we're able to do any of the stuff we do on this show. A special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon members, Jeremy Moses and Miss Chop. Thank you so much. Again, you are the lifeblood of this channel and we could not do it without you. If you'd like to support this channel, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Or you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like and that supports us too. I'll just sit and sip my coffee and have deep thoughts until you decide which. Indeed. No worries, Firewood, you'll not be burned. You'll be chopped to pieces to make my art.